conference will now be recorded. You're on, Joe. Okay, folks, begin with a ro roll call vote to make sure who we have. Duncan Berry. Duncan Berry is here. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick here. Dave Harris. David Harris is here. Joe McPerlin. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski here. Uh, Alan Peterson is not. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse here. Okay, and Billy Stoltz. Bill Stoltz here. Okay. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Paragraph 20, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict uh, limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Howard Planning Board is being conducted by a remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen or view this meeting while in progress may do so by logging in or calling in as specified above on this agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to log in? I think they're already logged. Okay, thank you very much. All right, the first matter on the agenda, agenda is a uh, public hearing on a uh, Davenport Company's case PB 2020-13. Applicant, I have to read the whole thing in, Charlie? No, you don't. It's already been open and read into the record, so you're just opening, reopening it for continuance. Okay, and uh, can I have... Uh, Somebody give me a motion to continue this matter. Uh, to, Happy to do that, Mary. Wait a minute, Mary. What date do we want to continue to? August 11. Okay, go ahead, Mary. I move that we continue the public hearing for PB 2020 13 Davenport Companies Inc. until uh, August. Our next meeting on August 11, 2020, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. Craig Chadwick. Do I have a second? Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, second. And we'll have a roll call vote because of the system. Duncan Berry. Just to clarify, the next meeting is actually the 28th of July. They've requested a continuance to the 11th, just so if anybody's confused that they don't have to come back on the 28th, you do. Okay. So the motion. So the motion. Go ahead, Mary. I'll amend my motion to say that we continue the public hearing to the meeting on August 11th, 2020, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. Okay, and we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Duncan Berry. Duncan Berry, aye. Greg Chadwick. Greg Chadwick, aye. Uh, Dave Harris. Dave Harris, aye. Joe McParland, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Alan Peterson. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, he's not here. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. And Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. So the matter is continued. Please, Charlene, what date again, please? August 11th. I got it. Okay. Matter is continued to August 11th. Uh, the second matter is PB 2020-14, Davenport Companies, Inc. And... Uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'd like a motion, if I can get one, please, to move that also. I'll make Joe, a motion that we continue the uh, PB 2020-14 to 11th of August, no sooner than 6.30 p.m. Craig Chadwick. Um, who's the moving, who's the moving Duncan. party? Duncan. Duncan. Okay. And do I have a second to Duncan's motion? Craig Chadwick, second. 
Okay. And a roll call vote. Duncan Berry. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. Dave Harris, aye. Joe McParland, aye. Mary Maslowski, aye. Arthur Rouse. <laughs> Arthur Rouse, aye. <laughs> and Bill Stokes. Bill Stokes, aye. Okay, that takes care of those two matters. Now, the next matter is PB 2020-16. Brian Murphy, care of Edward Hayes as applicant, seeks endorsement of a two-lot A&R entitled Division Plan Off Blue Heron Landing, dated April 1st, 2020, revised May 20th, 2020, Appeared by J. Thaddeus Eldridge, GLS, for a property located at Zero Kendrick Road, Map 108, Parcel P3. Parcels are in the RR Zoning District. And we'll hear from Mr. Murphy, your representative. Good afternoon. For the record, Thad Eldridge, E Southeast, here representing both Mr. Murphy and Mr. Hayes. Mr. Murphy and Mr. Hayes have negotiated for Mr. Hayes to acquire a small piece of land from Mr. Murphy's lot. Uh, it's an unbuildable parcel that will be combined with Mr. Hayes' property so he can build a garage. We were before you earlier this year with another plan. Um, they renegotiated in the meantime, and we attempted to continue that, but there were communication difficulties with the clients given all the COVID. If there are any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Anybody on the, on, on the planning board have any questions uh, with respect to this matter? Uh, Joe, seeing Charlie. None. Joe or Charlie, you want to hear from me? Uh, I, in a minute. Go ahead, Mary. I was going to ask to hear from Charlene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, we're here from the planning director. Okay, then. Um, sure. As, as um, Thad indicated, the plan does look familiar. Uh, the planning, a very similar plan was before the board back on May 28th. Um, however, since there are changes, they needed to come back. So the board has three options, vote to endorse. Uh, deny specifying and detailing um, why you're denying or take no action. Um, as far as uh, staff comments, planning, this appears to be a simple land swap between the parcels and an abutting parcel, which contains sufficient frontage per note four on the plan. Uh, police and fire have absolutely no comments. Conservation once again indicates that parcels will have some portion in conservation jurisdiction. Don't have an issue with the property lines, but may, may need approval if development occurs. And health, if the lots are ever developed, compliant Title V septic systems must be installed. No variances from the state or local requirements will be granted. Okay. Okay. Anybody else wants to be heard with you guys in this matter? Seeing none, um, or hearing none, I guess. Uh, can we get a motion, Mary? So I move that um, we adopt the following findings of fact, that the said plan does not constitute a subdivision as the way it is shown on the plan is a public way, maintained and used as a public way, and has, in the opinion of the planning board, sufficient width, suitable grades and adequate construction to provide for the needs of vehicular traffic in relation to the proposed use of the land abutting thereon or served thereby and for the installation of municipal services to serve such land in the buildings erected or to be erected thereon. Great. And thank you. And we'll have a roll call. Duncan Berry. Duncan Berry, aye. Greg Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McCarland, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. 
and Bill Stokes. Bill Stokes, hi. Okay. Now, do we need... What the hell was that? <laughs> I think you just won the lottery, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was me. Uh, I can't. I can't. Charlene, Charlene. So you can't yes, hear me. So. Charlene. Yes, Joe. Do we need the motion on the endorsement? Yes, you do. Mary, could I have a motion on the endorsement, please? Lord Joe. So I move that the board uh, move to endorse the approval not required plan entitled Division Plan of Ox Blue Heron Landing. Dated April 1, 2020, revised 5 20, 2020, prepared by J. Thaddeus Eldridge, PLS. Second. Okay, and a second. Craig Chadwick, second. Okay. And, and, and once again, a roll call, Duncan Berry. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Dave Harris. Dave Harris, aye. Joe McFarland, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Okay. Now, uh, we don't have any advisory opinions, do we, Charlene? Um, hold on a second. Actually, the next item on the agenda is the preliminary discussion regarding the draft West Harwich District of Critical Planning Concern zoning amendments. Okay, we'll hear from the planning director. Thank you. Um, we also have on the call Chloe Schaefer and Sarah Korjeff from the Cape Cod Commission. Um, mm -hmm. If they want to unmute, they certainly can. Um, I'm sure that they will make comments or they may just want to listen at this point. So just for the public in general and also the board members, it's been a little bit, but as you may be aware, the town through the Board of Selectmen did nominate the West Harwich corridor of Route 28 from the Dennisport town line east to the Herring River as a district of critical planning concern from here on out called a DCPC. The Brunswick County Commissioners approved the nomination and it became a county ordinance um, provided a number of 19-18 on December 4, 2019. The town has one year to implement bylaws and in the planning board meeting. And, and other things um, within that year. Um, just to give it, so originally the, the selectmen agreed to provide adequate time for drafting and vetting of the necessary bylaws and that there would likely be a special town meeting in the fall of 2020 to take these up. However, as you all are aware, with the COVID emergency, the annual town meeting was postponed, pushing everything to the fall. So at this point, we, I honestly don't know yet if the selectmen are going to accept any further additions to the warrant for a September meeting. I'm still trying to get an answer to that. Um, but what I do have for you all this evening, and it was available on the town website with um, appropriate links, is a working draft. And I want to emphasize this is a working draft document for discussion purposes only. Um, uh, the Cape Cod Commission provided a memorandum back on March 31st regarding the West Harwich DCPC, providing ideas for consideration. I also provided a boundary map of the DCPC prepared by the Commission. I also provided a map showing estimated setbacks for parcels within the DCPC, also prepared by the Commission. And there was also a draft sample map uh, dated um, April 16. Uh, 2020 showing potential new building setbacks, facade widths, and parking location requirements, um, also prepared by the Cape Cod Commission. And my husband just pulled in the driveway, so if you hear a truck, that's him. Um, I don't know how best to go through this, except perhaps highlighting on the, the new sections. Um, there would be a whole <coughs> section called West Harwich Special District. Uh, the first section, uh, which is 325.144, is the statutory authority and purpose. Um, the Cape Cod Commission's attorney 
Uh, Jessica will be looking at this language to make sure that it is going to be in compliance with the county requirements. Um, the next section, 325.40, oh, I have a typo. Uh, we have two 325.145s. Uh, one is the intent. The next is the applicability, and this is where the first question comes up. As the board may recall, the boundary map that was created, instead of um, marrying the 200-foot uh, boundary on either side, which encompasses the CH1 uh, zoning district, we actually went to the rear property line. Hi, <laughs> um, We went to the rear property lines of most of those parcels. And one of the questions um, that, that we need to decide on, and that doesn't need to happen, this evening, but one of the questions is, um, hold on one second. <laughs> can you can you hear me? Um, sorry about that. Is deciding what the boundary line, um, you know, at the 200 feet or the the rear boundary line. So, in some areas, when you have an overlay district, it, it usually marries the the underlying zoning district or we can create a whole new zoning district called the West Harwich Special District, which would then be its own zoning district and the new, lot, the new boundary lines would be those property lines rather than that 200 feet. Um, I don't know if, uh, if, Mr. Chairman, if you want me to go through the whole document and then we can go back or what, what is your pleasure? I think, I think that's enough. For this evening, I just want to know if there's anybody else no, 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 uh, no, no, on no. the board. I, I want to go through this whole document with all due respect. We, we do need to have some <laughs> comments um, from folks and input. So I have directions. Help me, if, help, if help me again on, on which document you're talking about. This is the July 7, 2020 draft working document for discussion purposes only. Um, and it's section, Roman numeral section 24, West Harwich Special District. Joe, I've got a question if I could. Go ahead, Mary. So, Charlie, did I, I just heard if I'm correct, you had commented whether we want to make it an overlay or underlying zoning, correct? Essentially, and that's correct, Mary. Okay, and I just wanted it to um, confirm the differences between the two. So when it's an overlay district, we tend, we on the planning board tend to have uh, the ability to to impose some waivers. And when, if I recall correctly, when we talked about doing the same thing in the Port district, if we made those changes, then um, any uh, any waivers with respect to shape and size and setbacks and all those lovely things go to a variance for the Zoning Board of Appeals, correct? It is. However, because this is a DCPC, yep. we have more uh, wiggle room. We can completely do away from uh, do away with grandfathering. And that's actually going to okay. come up a little bit later. So there is there is the ability to be a little more flexible. Um, with the DCPC than there normally would be. Okay. But you are right. If this was like okay. in the West, in the, the Harwichport district, the question came up whether we want to make the overlay the actual underlying zoning, and it was pointed out very clearly from um, Adam Costa, our, our zoning council, that if you do that, you can no longer grant waivers. You're, you're absolutely right. Mr. Chairman, this is Craig. I do have a question. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, before we delve into the, the guts of the document, I wonder if somebody could address the sort of the process and procedures that we're expected to go forward with. And I'm specifically concerned about, uh, if I understood correctly, the introductory, introductory letter from Sarah dated July 7th says we have one, the town has one year to implement the bylaws. That's actually my memo. Oh, sorry. 
I'm sorry. Yes, you're correct. Um, and given the fact that um, I think as we are planning right now, we're going to have the annual town meeting in September, and it's supposed to be um, as, what do I want to say? Uh, minimal amount of warrants as possible because of the whole concern about public meetings and so on and so forth. So cut to the chase, I'm concerned. It seems like there could be or should be a lot of discussion um, and investigation questions and answers about what we're going to propose for zoning amendments before the, the annual town meeting. And I'm wondering, is it realistic to think, given our schedules and the COVID thing and where we are on whatever today is July something, um, is it realistic to think that we're going to have zoning amendments in place for the September annual town meeting? And if, it, if not, and I guess maybe this is a question for the, the Cape Cod Commission Council, is there any um, change or ability to extend that, the town having one year to implement the, the bylaws because of the whole COVID thing? And can the tolling be changed so that we have until next year's normal May 2000, what would 21 annual town meeting? There is under the, under the Cape Cod Commission document, and Sarah just unmuted, but under the Cape Cod Commission provisions, there is an ability to get a six month extension. Six months from, it would be six, six months from, from December, December. Four. That Which being one? said, we're also investigating, and, and Sarah definitely chime in if it's okay with the chair, and I think it is, but um, we're also looking we at um, determining what the for lack of a better term, bare minimum is to implement the DCPC before the December 4th. This is the this is almost the whole enchilada in a very draft form. It may be that this entire document does not need to go before town meeting come September. And we're still trying to figure out what the bare minimum may be so that we've at least implemented the DCPC um before that one year expiration and and if sarah if you don't mind commenting on that sure this is sarah Korjeff. uh thank you for including me i think what is Girl, worth would you identify identify your organization too for the record sure, sure. this is sarah Korjeff, and i'm on the staff of the cape cod commission and okay uh, i knew i knew that but we needed it in the record Okay. Thank Go you. ahead, Sarah. Charlene is correct that um, the DCPC process does have a provision for a six-month extension, and that's something that's been in place. It's not COVID-related, um, so it might even be possible that there could be a further extension due to the the COVID situation. But um, since we don't know the answer to that, we'd rather um, move forward, assuming that we have 18 months uh, maximum. And I think what uh, what's worth noting though, and this is covered in the memorandum that I sent dated March 31st, um, there are two items in the DCPC decision by the Cape Cod Commission that the town must address in order to uh, create adequate implementing regulations for the West Harwich area. And then there are a number of other items that we ask you to consider addressing. But the two items that must be addressed are um, revised dimensional regulations, meaning like building setbacks, um, parking location, building height, those, those sort of things. And the second item is um, related to access to properties. So vehicle access, um, trying to implement some regulations that would provide for safer, access to properties and fewer curb cuts along Route 28. So if the if it's what we're hoping, I think, is that those two items at least could be addressed at the soonest possible time, whether that's the September town meeting or whether that's um, the, the town meeting that immediately follows that. Um, and then the rest of the items could potentially be addressed um, at a separate meeting. Okay. Anybody, first of all, on the board? 
Anybody on the board have any questions? Uh, Joe, it's Craig again, a follow-up to that. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Sarah. So um, does the, the two absolute requirements that you just explained need to be done by the December 4th date, or we're assuming that the six month extension would be granted. I guess a, a side question, is there anything that the town of Harwich or the planning board needs to do or file with the Cape Cod Commission uh, to request that six month delay? And furthermore, is that something that we as a board need to vote on? Uh, do we need to get the selectmen involved in that kind of thing? And um, a second, observation or slash question. Um, obviously, COVID has messed up a lot of things for us. And I, I'm just concerned that um, I don't know what we'll end up with in terms of the extent of zoning changes or proposed zoning amendments. Uh, but I would hate to think that um, the if in fact there are major changes that um, they would be, what do I want to say? I would want to have as much town input as possible. And assuming that the September meeting, and maybe I shouldn't assume, I know what happens when I assume, um, but uh, assuming that the, the turnout is going to be relatively low, um, we could have some significant changes approved by a real small number of um, eligible voters in town. And again, I know it's pure speculation, but I wondered if this is, is part of, should we have this kind of conversation, process, procedure, <clears throat> timing, and so forth, before we actually delve into the meat of the changes? I know that was a long-winded question. I apologize for the length of that. So, so there well, are, it, so this is Sarah Cornef again. Um, there are a number ahead, of questions Sarah. there. And I think maybe if I could boil it down to two primary concerns, one is about the extension for the DCPC time period. You would, the planning board or the board of selectmen who nominated the DCPC would have to make a formal request to the Cape Cod Commission for that six month extension. And that would just have to be done soon enough that the commission could vote on it at one of their regularly scheduled meetings. Um, but I think if we can identify well in advance whether that extension will be necessary, we should, um, it would be smart for the town to request that as early as possible. Um, the second part lot, of your, oops, sorry. No, I just gonna say, Sarah, and a lot of, of some of the questions you brought up are answered in that 11 page document that I have, I, I assume we all have authored by yourself and, and people on your staff. Right, well, so those are recommendations all for your consideration and for the consideration of uh, you know members of the public who might be voting. I, I think the second part of your question really related to the public process. And you might remember that we actually had planned, um, or Charlene and the town had planned a public meeting to to really start or a workshop to begin gathering public information or public input and obviously that was preempted by the covid situation we um i guess i would suggest that you can still hold public forums of a sort through a video conference like this um, on some <clears throat> of the other towns on the cape we're working with them to develop some um, surveys that can be done by people at their leisure, but would ask them specific questions yeah. about uh, possible changes. So I think there are some ways that you can ensure that there's still a good opportunity for, in, for input from the general public. And, and I think it, um, perhaps that's a good thing for your board to discuss either tonight or in the near future, how you'd like to move forward with that. That's a good idea. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, again, a follow-up question, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, 
regarding if we are to to try to get something on the on the warrant for September, uh, backing off. For, I don't know the date of the the planned uh, annual town meeting in September, but backing off from there, how much lead time is required uh, for the publishing of the warrant and to getting the articles in there, and where does that put us from today being July again, whatever it is, 15th, 14th, um, is that have to be in, um, nailed down by a month prior to the September meeting date or a month and a half, I don't know. We, we I know have been, Go we've ahead. We've provided absolutely no timeline yet regarding uh -huh. the September 28th town meeting. So I honestly can't comment on that. But regardless of that, we need to start having conversations regarding the West Harwich DCPC. If it happens through the, the planning board meeting, great. If it doesn't, you know, I, I go do it on my own. Like we were gonna have the public meeting um, back in March that got canceled because of COVID. Um, I, need, I need direction from folks. This document did go out to 45 folks um, that I have emails for. Um, I did receive comments back from, from one who I shared those comments with you all. Um, even if we can't do this by the September town meeting, we still need to be working on this. I, and and I, I agree with you 110%, Charlene. I'm not, I wasn't advocating that we uh, you know, slow down or delay or not uh, start delving into the, the guts of the changes. I think that's very, very appropriate. But I think there's all these procedural and process and timing questions um, that I think we need to be have answered and have a good feel for uh, sooner rather than later uh, is is really all the my where my concern lies. I've made the request to find out and I have not heard back. Charlene. Yes, sir. Uh, my question, which I think is relevant and important to this, is that uh, at some point here uh, we're going to lose you, aren't we? Yes, you are. <laughs> and what, 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 what's that perspective date? Oh, Duncan, I didn't like the pouty face. No, um, way to go. <laughs> <laughs> my anticipated date is um, uh, around Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. That, and that's, I, I thought it was September, but maybe it, no, I was it incorrect. No, it's supposed to be July, but I have continued it and to, to November, and it'll be um, okay. around. All right. Well, maybe we can have a right. set, another another six month extension, like uh, we're going to ask for, or I assume we'll ask for from the Cape Cod Commission. We'll get a six month. How, how about that, Charlene? No. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm a little slow this evening. Okay. Household that might disagree. <laughs> well, for, for the members members of the planning board, I, I think what I'd like to ask you all to do, I know you've had it for a while, but to sort of put a little time into this 11-page document uh, from uh, the Cape Cod Commission. And, and, and also, uh, my five-page, the, the draft bylaw, too, is important. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and be prepared uh, to make some hopefully preliminary action on that at our next meeting. Could I make a anybody have me here, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, while we have uh, Sarah here, uh, Georgia from Cape Cod Commission, I would just like to commend uh, what is obviously the product of some really deep, uh, careful consideration of what's been going on in terms of the the um, zoning of this area and the statement of um, the purpose and intent um, and the entire five-page document. I just have to say was I thought it was a really fantastic e effort, and um, I <clears throat> I am just thrilled to be part of this. I think this is an incredible process. I think it. Um, I have some questions. I have some like small marginalia i'm happy to, to go through this point by point or if you'd like uh, if this is not the opportunity i can submit maybe like a 
a, a couple of questions of my own. I don't know how formalized we're going to get or how deep we're going to drill into this tonight. But I think it's and who needs to step up and say that this is a fantastic document that's a product of about a year and a half work of wor worth of work on the part of uh, the commission and our planner. And I kudos to the team. Thank you. And who's that speaking? This is Duncan Barry. Okay, I, I wasn't sure. Okay, anybody else on the board wishes to be heard with respect to this matter? Uh, Joe, uh, this, is, this is Dave Harris. Uh, Go ahead, I David. Thought the purpose, I thought the purpose of tonight was to go through comments on this document. Right. That was not my understanding, was but you may, you may be right. Charlene, you help us out here. It, it's on the agenda as, I've lost my agenda, as a discussion. So how, whatever the board wants to have for that discussion is entirely in your hands, not mine. So whatever the pleasure of the board is. Yeah, the, the, the agenda says preliminary discussion, which I, and let me, I don't want to cut anybody off. Is there anybody else who wishes to be heard with regard to this matter? Joe, it's Craig. Go ahead, Craig. Thank you, sir. Uh, I just want to nail down, and I hate to be, you know, hammering away at, at process and procedure, but uh, have we made a decision or do we need to take a vote? uh to ask the board of selectmen to apply for this extension uh to the cape cod commission just so we have it in our pocket i think sarah suggested that i don't want to put words in your mouth sarah but that it would be a good idea and i don't know that there would be any detriment at least to start that process so that we have it if we need it question so jolene do you will you want to make a comment on that um, he asked Sarah, so I'll defer to Sarah. Personally, I think it's a little bit too early for that, but okay. Sure. Right. So here, that's, 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 um, that's why we have so. a planning director. Go ahead, Sarah, if you wish it to be heard. Thank you. I I think that it's it would be valuable for the town to make the request several months before the the twelve months are over, like several months before the December 4th date, but I don't think that you have to do it right now. I, I think a big question would be whether or not you will be able to bring any items before the September town meeting. And if you can't do that, then maybe that, then you will know you'll need that extension. All right, anybody else on the planning board wishes to be heard with regard to this matter? Mr. So, Chairman, Mr. Dave Mr. Chairman, my, my question. Billy, hang on a Chairman. second, please. Go ahead. Who are you telling to go ahead? You've got Dave, Mary, and Bill who all would like to speak. Okay, let's start with Bill Stoltz. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a, a thing for uh, Shaolin. Um, on uh, 325-153 of your draft, working draft, it says, uh, buildings with a one in 12 pitch allowed. Uh, I think that we should make a minimum pitch within that area on a roof of at least seven, if not eight. Again, this is a working draft, and this is where I need okay. input from you all. Perhaps. So I just wanted to give you my opinion, shall I? <laughs> no, 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 no. And 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 I I respect your opinion. And this is where I need input from folks because. You know, th this is, you know, just where we need input. Um, and this is a working draft. This is a very working draft. It's nothing is, is cast in stone by any stretch of the imagination here. And that's why we need some input. Also, if, if I might, on this particular section, uh, the Cape Cod Commission is also going to assist in some wording here. Uh, I spoke at length with them last week and you know, we agreed that some of the language here may not be suitable for for West Harwich. I actually stole a lot of this language from another uh, town just to start the conversation. Okay. Anybody so, else now wishes to be heard on this matter? Mayor, about Look, the, Mary. The pitch. 
Yes, go ahead, Mary. So I just want to throw it out there, Mr. Chairman. So we, as you you referred back to the memorandum from um, Sarah Korjeff and her team at the Cape Cod Commission. I'm, I'm looking at it. Yeah. I'm wondering if at our next meeting to get some additional uh, general public input, if we shouldn't have a public hearing on, or at least ask for input on some of the, some of Sarah and her team's recommendations. I think their memo does an excellent job of saying how it exists what the current regulations require and what they're recommending what they're uh, recommending um or potential changes and i i wonder if at this point it wouldn't be a good idea to have to solicit that general public input from the neighbors and the people that really bought into this in the first place to see how they feel about some of these recommendations to help us inform charlene our own decisions and Charlene with um, filling out the draft of the district itself. And and what would you do? Put that in the notice for the next meeting? I I would just I would schedule it as a part of it. I, I think Charlene has a comment though, so I just wanted to throw it out there. Your your next uh, meeting, you actually have a continuance of the mini golf project. So wow, that has a potential of, of being a heavy meeting. I don't know if we want to defer it to the first meeting in August or if we even want to set up a different date and time for a meeting um, that mm -hmm. it can be dedicated just for the purposes of this um, this topic. Like we tried to yeah. do when, when I was going to be facilitating a meeting with the public. Yeah, I, I think, Charlene, that because I've had some contact, uh, those folks that live in those apartments up above where that proposed golf thing is supposed to Well, anyway, those folks are, I expect, will, will participate heavily in that next meeting. So. I don't know uh, if you want this well, on the same agenda. I'm sorry. I said I, I agree. I don't know if we want to have this on the same agenda as the miniature golf. Yeah, yeah I, I I agree. Um, well, we'll 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 figure that out. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to be heard on on this matter? Yeah, this is Dave Harris. And I think, go ahead, Dave. Uh, I just wanted to go back to Craig's questions. He asked a two-part question. First, is it time to ask for the extension and does it take a motion of the board to do it? No. We got an answer to one of those, but we didn't get the other one. I just wanted to clear, bring that closure. The selectmen are the yeah. nominating committee. For, they nominated this, so it would have to, uh, the request would have to be from the board of selectmen, in my opinion, to request that oh. extension. So- Okay, we do I, not need a motion to the ask the board of selectmen to do that then uh, obviously as the town planner if i see that we're not going to be able to get anything done for september i'll go to the board of selectmen and say you, we need okay. all right my other question is with respect to a, a hearing of sorts to explain this proposal to the neighbors uh, that's a very difficult thing to do because one with corona the effect of COVID 19 but giving them this document will be pretty meaningless to most of them. We we learned that in East Harwich. We need a we I would think we need a presentation and, and, and how to digest this to some extent so they understand what these provisions mean. Now how would how in the under the current current conditions would we go about that? I, I think you would quite frankly leave that up to me. Um as okay. you mentioned earlier. We were going to have that type of presentation in March at an open meeting, and then that got canceled. So I think okay. there are other methods and and ways of um, communicating those um, 
the ideas, what needs to happen in other ways. Um, for the municipal vulnerability preparedness, we did a video because we couldn't have that public meeting um, to invite people. So a video was made, which was excellent. I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to look at that. So there are other forms of getting the word out there as to what it is that um, is expected, what needs to happen, and how we might go about that. Thank you. I appreciate the nice answer. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments about this particular? Okay. I, I that's obviously ask, on. Mr. Chairman. That's obviously on. Go ahead. Who's that? It's Charlene. I'm sorry. I would ask Go if ahead. board members um, have any particular questions or recommendations to get them to me individually. I won't, you know, just send them to me um, so that I can I can look at those, get them to the commission staff, so we can kind of mold this and and keep going with the draft. We we need to keep moving. Um, this needs to be a moving document, and we need to keep that moving. So if anybody has particular uh, recommendations, um, definitely get them to me. Writing is great, if that doesn't work for some folks. Certainly we can have a phone call or even set up a time to meet, sit in six feet apart <laughs> uh, to, to go over some of this. So I'm very much open to input from anybody and everybody. Um, no pride of authorship here. I understand. Okay. Anybody else? All right. I think that, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, Tony Board of Appeals, uh, everybody's seen the advisory opinions. We don't have to act on that. Um, uh, do we need or, uh, uh, but we'll do the minutes next time. Uh, I know. Please do those tonight. We, we that's have what you want. We, so this is Mary. I move that we accept the, uh, the minutes from the June 25th, 2020 meeting and place them on file. Duncan Berry. Do I have a second? Craig Chadwick. Okay. Uh, Duncan Barry and a, Okay, and a roll call, Duncan? Duncan, aye. Craig? Craig Chadwick, aye. Dave Harris? David Harris, abstain. Okay, wait a minute, I gotta write that down. Okay, Joe McFarland, aye. Mary? And Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. And Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Okay, Charlie, as far as I'm concerned, I'm at the bottom of my agenda unless I've missed something. You have Roman numeral 3C, Old Business, Continued Discussion on Draft Amendment to multifamily dwelling. Um, at the last meeting, the board um, asked that I prepare a zoning article, and that's what I did. And it's, it's in our papers here? Yes, it is. Agenda item number three, season. Oh, I see it. What is uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Craig. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, did the Board of Selectmen take this up at last night's meeting? I, I didn't watch last night. Anybody no, else? took up essential services. Ah, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Thanks, Craig. Good catch. Folks, we're going to have to have a, a quick recess here while I run out to the John. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> TMI. Yeah, exactly. Mundo. So, 
Next week is the one year anniversary of our tornado. Ah, right. Oh my God. I'm going to take a pass on that. Oh, I know. Wow. And next March will be the one year anniversary for closed meetings. <laughs> and we still may be doing it this way. Well, Although I won't, I'll be retired. <laughs> <laughs> How's your schedule tomorrow, Charlene? Um, I've got a phone call at 10. Oh, actually I can look, hold on a second. Hold on a second. A physical therapy at 7 a.m. in the morning. Here. I have a phone call at 10, a meeting at 11.30, and another meeting at 1, and then a meeting at 3. Well, I'll, I'll send you text, and you can pick a time when we can chat about a couple of things, okay? Okay. How early are you up in the morning, Dave? 6.30 or 7. I can talk to you on my way back from PT to work. Okay. Or if you have if you write down on some things on uh, comments on the on the documents. Okay, that'll be hard while I'm driving. That would be it. Say. Yeah. I'll just you know pick pick a time when when you have a, maybe a half an hour opening and uh, you can give me a call or tell me when to okay. call you whatever. Nope, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, I'm back, and we're 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 working on uh, agenda item three C one, right? Yes, sir. And this is the discussion of the uh, multifamily dwelling bylaw. Yes. Could you start, Charline, by telling us a little bit about this and? So, as the board may recall, after last year's town meeting, so the May 2019 town meeting, uh, we reviewed a number of different items which um, uh, we felt needed to be amended or changed, and this was one of them. Um, the existing bylaw for multifamily is extremely cumbersome, and in my opinion, just completely unrealistic. Um, all that being said, I had prepared a draft um, of those changes uh, dated this, actually, I don't have the previous one, but dated sometime in May, I think. And the board reviewed this at the second meeting in June. And uh, the board members at that meeting asked me to actually prepare it as a zoning amendment. So in your packet, the first three pages are that zoning amendment. I've discovered there are a couple typos which need to be corrected, but we actually haven't talked about the meat of this either. Um, so I don't know where the, the board wants to go. I do, I have heard from one board member who is concerned about um, the proposed changes to table three which is the height and bulk regulation, um, the 50 foot allowance for a, a building of a multifamily. Um, I'm, I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but uh, the existing bylaw section 325.20, which is called Stories for Human Use or Occupation, um, in that section, it says for multifamily hotel motel use cannot exceed 50 feet. So there it allows for 50 feet. But in the actual table, um, table three, 
it says 40 feet. So there's already a conflict there. And quite frankly, the height makes no difference to me. Um, but I, I do believe that and at least multifamily, the opportunity to have three stories is not a bad thing. And it can be done very creatively um, through architecture. So whether it's 40 feet, 50 feet, makes no difference to me. This was, again, conversation. We need to have that conversation and a starting point. Anybody on the board have any questions or comments about this? No, it's Mary. Go ahead. So thank you. Um, Charlene, I just wanted to say thank you. I actually liked the draft. Um, you know, I was going to ask you the reason behind the, the 40 to 50 feet, and certainly if it's clearing up a um, an inconsistency, then I think it's the right thing to do in in making the changes. Um, I personally wouldn't be adverse to referring this to the Board of Selectmen to have them refer it back to us. Um, I, I didn't feel, I really didn't see significant, um, have any significant problems with the draft. So, um, I would, I would be fine with referring it to the selection for them to refer back to us for public hearing, um, in the, the hopes we could get it done. Um, but I'm just throwing that out there for my colleagues. Mary, Mary Jo. Yep. Hi, Joe. Um, let's see, let's hear from other folks uh, if anybody else has any comments on the board. And if not, uh, would you be kind enough to make that motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Bill. Okay, go ahead, Bill. Okay, so my my concerns, so that you know, it is on table th uh, three, height and bulk. bulk. Um, I'd like to see it stay at 40 feet. Um, whether it's two and a half stories or three stories, uh, I would prefer two and a half, but I would, would go along with three, but definitely not go along with a four story, any four story zones. Okay, and that's, that, uh, that, that's under that section of it that says maximum permitted height stories. In other words, you think, yes. you don't agree with the, you don't agree with the four feet. Not the full thing. I agree with what Charlene just said. Forty feet's fine. Uh, two and a half to three stories, I could agree with, but not but not the four stories. I understand now. Okay. Anybody else wishes to be heard with regard to this matter? Uh, I, this is Go ahead, Mary. Um, I just had a question for, for I guess, Charlene and for Bill. Um, is the concern with the four, so Charlene, I guess first, is the four including an, an occupied lower level, like a basement that could be occupied if it was done correctly? If it's habitable? Yes, I mean, a, a basement area could be considered part of it, not entirely usually, but a portion of it, if it had a walkout, could be considered um, a story. So essentially, I'm sorry, this is Craig, Mr. Chairman, question. Go ahead. Uh, so essentially, you could have, uh, the way it's written now, uh, a four story above grade, building or a four story occupied one of which is below grade and three or above grade essentially yes okay i think i agree with bill that um i think three stories is, is this is would you just I, identify yourself I, i'm sorry joe it's craig again and i'm just stating That's that I, fine. I, I agree with bill <laughs> that I, I'm not real comfortable with the four stories above grade. I think three is appropriate. And then you need to be prepared to make a motion to 
No, uh, no motions yet. No motions yet, please. <laughs> Okay, but somebody, if, if they're not happy with four, needs to make a, a motion to reduce it to three, right? No one need, if, if it's a consensus of the, of, the, of the board that they would prefer 40 feet in height and three feet, 30, 40 feet total height and three stories, that's fine. We don't need a motion to do that, to change a draft. It's just what okay. is the consensus of the board? Yeah. All right. Anybody on the board? Body first first piece of discussion. And anybody want to talk about the difference between forty and fifty? Think about that one. All right. And then the other piece that I think we're talking about is the uh two and a half story versus four. If I can weigh in, this is Charlene. Um, only because ahead, a, half, a half story can be an attic space or a basement space, depending upon how you look at it. So just kind of thinking it out in, in my mind, which can be a scary place to go sometimes. Um, I don't know if we want it to be a three and a half story to be consistent with a 30 feet, two and a half story versus a 40 feet, three and a half story. Um, just to allow for, you know, attic space or basement space um, that could be used for storage or some other type of, of something. Um, I'm just thinking, trying to think of the logic behind the 30 feet and the two and a half stories. Anybody on the board comment on that? Well, yep, uh, Joe, Bill Stoltz, um, again, depends on how you, how, if you have three stories, you could have two full stories coming out of above ground and then have a large roof on top for the third story, which would have dormers or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Or you can go the opposite way, which would be have half the foundation showing and then put two and a, another two stories on top of that. So that gives you the two and a half. And you could go ahead and call half it's another half story, just a high pitched roof. And, stick a studio apartment in there with no no dollars. So I think we need to stick with the three stories. Whether no yeah, matter which way the no no matter which way the architect draws it. Okay. Billy, based on based on the document I'm looking at, in other words, what says four uh should be three in your opinion. Yes sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman. And okay. the footnote would disappear. Footnote number one would disappear. Wait a minute. Bear with me until I find that. <laughs> it, you've got the number four for stories with a little tiny one next to it. Yes. That's a footnote. So down below it says the one pursuant oh, I to see, I see, I see, I see. That would have to remove, be removed. Bear with me, I'm trying to find it. No, it's on, it's right below the table, Joe. It's line number, tw I put lines, numbered lines, it's line number 29. Pursuing, oh, I see it now. Okay, all right. And, and tell me how that changes. It goes away. There's no okay. more footnote All one. Right. There would be no more footnote one. Okay. And additionally, and, if and again, I have no problem no, with doing that. But Charlene, Charlene, before you go on, and and what would be the maximum per permitted height stories? Three. Three. As I understand okay. it. Yes. Okay. Yep. Double advocate. When you get a minute there, who's who wants to be a devil, Duncan? <laughs> Go ahead, Duncan. All right. So just uh, it's a matter of clarification. My thinking is that if we're counting a basement as a full story, and you have a ground floor and an upstairs, and you have a pitched roof, that's three and a half stories. 
it, it, or I, I, I think I'd lean on Mr. Stoltz for that one. Well, again, it's going to be depending on the architect. If he draws the building as a full foundation with only eight inches of foundation showing, from that grade point up, you could have the three thirds. Which above grade. Above grade. So that's my concern is that if we, we would be um, ruling out, excluding all sorts of properties that have a full basement. And is that a good thing or bad? Well, they can do whatever they want to a basement, but they can take advantage of the distance between grade and the start of the top of the first floor. I'm going to call it. They can, uh, they can do it like a split level. Type entrance like they did all in the 28 at the Hampton Hills project. Uh, so they, they just gained more stories that way. And I think we should just write it up as just a total of three stories. Whether you do it with a half, half basement or not, or with uh, two full stories and a, and a half of a pitched roof of the dollar on. Three stories. Let me go back to Charlene, if I can, please. Uh, are you? Have you heard enough? From what I hear, it's three stories. Okay, that's that, that's what we want to do. I, I Anything else? Dave, there? Is, I have a question. When you can get to it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Whoever asks, uh, David, if you have I'm envisioning a terrace where the building at the lower level steps up, where do you measure the height of the of the uppermost building? Even though it may only be two stories, it could be four stories above the building uh, where it starts at the lower level of the of the terrace. So how do you measure that? I want to make sure we don't uh, eliminate quality architectural solutions just because measuring the total height of the building or uh, a portion of the building where, where, the, where the building steps up a hill. How does that work, Charlene? I, I don't have the definition in front of me, I apologize. Um, but I believe it is the, so if you have, um, for those of you who can see my hands, if you have a grade like this, and you have yeah. a wall coming up this way, it's the average of the grade. Uh, okay. I believe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a complicated thing to do uh, with simple numbers. It, it, it is. Yeah. Okay, Chairman. Do we, if I may. Go, who, who is it, please? It, it's Bill Stoltz. Uh, it's a, Go ahead. Let's select. Just to let Dave know that in the town of Howard, when they, they use the table for the height of the building, they do it at grade at all, all four sides and take the average. Okay. That's ob it's obviously somebody who's pulled a permit in the town. Anybody else who wishes to be heard or discussed in this, in, in this document? Mr. Chairman, it's Craig. Go ahead. Uh, and to follow up, Bill, on what you said, um, and Dave, um, would it be helpful, would it be appropriate to uh, define when we're talking about this zoning regulation that when we count stories, we count them from grade, or as Bill just explained, the four sides and an average? It's already defined. It's already defined, yeah. I don't have the zoning bylaw with me, so I can't tell you what the definition is. It's already defined. So are we having a dilemma that we don't need to have if it's already defined that if, if a story is considered anything above grade for this purpose of this the zoning change? I, I don't think you want to have different definitions for height. No. And, so it's already defined. So um it is defined it's in it's defined in the 
definitions in the zoning bylaw. So you have Thank to- Thank you, Charlene, that satisfies me. Yeah. 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 But all that being said, yeah. there's one more amendment, this is Charlene, that's gonna need to take place. In Go that, ahead. In that section 325.20, stories for human use or occupation. We need to remove multifamily dwelling from that. Otherwise, it's going to say 50 feet here uh, and 40 feet there. So right. I'm sorry. Where are, you, where are you now on the document? It's 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 not in the proposed zoning bylaw document because it wasn't going to be changed. But if you go to the um, second document attached, which is the draft zoning changes multifamily dated the 6th, it's a page document on page four at the top section this is an existing section of the bylaw section 325 storage for human use or occupation and, and in there the term multifamily dwelling is in there that needs to come out okay now, I assume we're discussing this as a draft, and you'll make these changes. Yes. That, am I right? Yes. I got it. Joe, this is Mary. Can I just ask a question? Go ahead. So through you, Joe, to Charlene, I'm just trying to clarify. I, I had some audio trouble, so I missed part of it. Um, they've... The fifty feet that you the fifty feet that you put into the draft was really just to make it agree with the table twenty for human use. Section three twenty so in order to, in order so in order not to have a conflict, you're now gonna have to if we leave your current draft of multifamily at forty instead of at fifty, you're going to have to carve it out from the other table, correct? The other section of the bylaw, it's not a table, it's a section, but yes. Okay, okay, yes. thanks. Exactly, Mary. And we, and we assume she'll do that, Mary. No, no, I know I, that, I, mean, I, I, I had audio trouble, and, and I had missed part okay. of what All right. was being said, so I was just trying to clarify it. That's fine, that's fine. It's not the easiest way to run a meeting, I'll tell you, or participate it's in not. one. You're all okay, here. anything else on uh, Charlene? Yes, sir. Anything else on that document? Um, nothing else. What I tried to do in this is to try and clean up right now when you do multi when you look for the term multifamily, it's everywhere in the zoning bylaw. So I'm I tried uh, to consolidate it and essentially that's what um on on um the third page of the proposed bylaw from lines 55 through 87, that consolidates a lot of other sections of the bylaw into one specific section. I mean, you'd be looking- Is that all new language or, 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 or you just moved existing bylaw parts into that? Exactly, basically moved existing bylaw parts that were scattered all over the zoning bylaw into one boom section. Okay, I see it. Is there anybody on the board who has any questions or comments about section Q? I, I, I don't I don't hear or see any. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, are we done with that, Charlene? That's that's your decision, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> All right. What is the pleasure of the board? Would you like to see one more cleaned up draft? Yes, I, I, as chairman, I would, yes. So this will be on the next agenda. Yes, I'd appreciate that. Very good. Okay. Talk to me, what else we got left here? I got nothing. Briefings and reports. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Craig, I have one thing. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I just want to give kudos to Charlene and the staff on the uh, the process that you established for having us come in to sign the mylars and the um, 
the documents. I thought that was superb. Uh, I felt very comfortable um, in terms of the precautions taken and the way you set it up and organized it. I just, two thumbs up. Thank Good you. job. Oh, Thank you. Bravo. I agree. Thank you, Sean. I tried. <laughs> I done good. I okay. If, if there's nothing else, Mary, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I have a second. Very <laughs> okay. And, and a roll call. Duncan Berry. Aye. Greg Chadwick. He said aye. Okay. Dave Harris. Aye. Joe McCallan. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Alan, uh, no, I know he's not there. Arthur Rouse. Aye. And Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank this you. Is, this is not, an, You're not an easy way to run this thing, but it's the best we can do. Thank you for the Good job. night, everyone. Take care. Good night, everybody. Good night. This conference uh, is no longer day. being recorded. Hi. Charlene, can you still hear me? Yeah. Hi. Um, I had, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden it just booted me. Wow. Yeah, it was weird. And I still have it up. I can still see.